Welcome back everyone, my name is Token D Rock here with another video. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the uncertainty in the market that we're currently seeing. We're gonna be going over some bullish Bitcoin and crypto news by and large. So taking a look at the market, we can see Bitcoin is holding just barely above 36. Going into the weekend, it's not looking that great, but Bitcoin did hold up relatively strong last weekend. So maybe we see something similar this weekend. Who knows? Time will tell. I might hold off on buying Bitcoin just to see if it tests those lower 30,000s. Ethereum's looking pretty juicy, but again, everything's dependent on Bitcoin, so I might hold off on buying some. BNB's looking juicy. Cardano's looking juicy under $1.40. Polkadot's looking juicy. A lot of altcoins looking juicy, not gonna lie. But again, gonna hold off from buying just to see what the market does. Again, dollar cost average is your best friend. First bit of news we have to go over that pertains to crypto. The Federal Reserve released a statement regarding inflation and interest rates within the past 48 hours. More or less, they said we'd see very little growth, if any, to interest rates or inflation this year. We know that's a load of BS because as we went over in last video, we're looking at 5% but they have to give the illusion to the masses that everything's okay. You don't need to invest in all these assets that the wealthy, the rich, the elites are investing in. It's all fine. Your currency is not being devalued. Do not panic, essentially. And the other takeaway is they moved their forecast on when inflation or interest rates might go up from 2024 to 2023. Within 48 hours of the Federal Reserve releasing that statement, we have Jim Bullard from the Fed basically saying he sees the first interest rate hike coming as soon as the end of 2022. This is obviously ahead of the Fed's new forecast of 2023 being the year we see inflation rates climb a bit. He's saying late 2022. So if he's saying late 2022, probably guess it early 2022 or maybe even earlier than that because we are looking at 5% inflation rate this year. They have to lead the illusion that everything's okay so people don't uh, lose faith in them. And in this article, he says we're looking at 3% interest rate for this year, which is higher than the Fed's target of 2%. And we're looking at fastest growing inflation since the early 1980s. So overall, like Paul Tudor Jones said, the Federal Reserve's credibility is at stake. More and more people are gonna put two and two together and they're gonna lose faith in the Federal Reserve. In other news, we have Mark Cuban calling for stablecoin regulation in the wake of Iron Finance bank run. Essentially, Mr. Cuban witnessed a rug pull in real time on the Iron Finance protocol and he's asking for regulators to step in and regulate stable coins. Now, a lot of people are kind of questioning Mr. Cuban and his actions because he does blame himself for being too lazy and not doing enough research on the project before YOLOing in a bunch of money. And conveniently, he's like, oh yeah, I got out just in time, um, but I don't want people to you know, go through this pain and struggle um, if they weren't so lucky like me. And essentially people are starting to question and speculate, Mr. Cuban, were you part of the rug pool? It's pretty convenient that you got out just in time and now you're asking for regulations, kind of like Elon Musk in the sense that his company Tesla bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. People call him the crypto god. He's the savior for crypto. He's bringing all these people into the crypto space. And then a few months pass, and then Mr. Musk changes his attitude. Oh, we're, not, we're no longer accepting Bitcoin because um, it's horrible for the environment. It's huge climate change driver basically FUD, and now Mr. Cuban, who was also another savior for crypto, is begging for regulation. So essentially we have two camps here. We have the big crypto guys saying, hey, crypto needs to stay, crypto needs to stay decentralized. If you 
YOLO into a project or you go all into a project and you get burned, that should be on you. There shouldn't be a governmental agency that interferes and tries to get you your money back, you know, essentially. While the other camp is like, hey, well, I'd rather we regulate crypto than outright ban it. So there's two philosophies when it comes to this. I'm kind of more towards the former, but that's just me. I can see why people think the latter, though. Moving over to China for our next bit of crypto news, we have a city in Sichuan reportedly ordering its crypto miners to shut down for investigation. This is just the latest of the regulatory crackdown that the Chinese government is doing across several provinces. According to them, this is basically only going to affect the big miners in the area, and according to them, this is to drive usage of renewable energy. In other news, we have an analyst coming out saying that Chinese Bitcoin mining shakeout may have surprised Bitcoin price consequences. Essentially, he's saying that as more and more Bitcoin miners move to renewables in the country of China, we should see the electrical cost to mine Bitcoin go down, which then would lower the floor price of Bitcoin temporarily. But as he says in this article, it looks like we are seeing very strong similarities to 2017 scenario. So as of right now, we may see the floor price go down a bit, but later on the year, we should see Bitcoin rise a considerable amount. Just speculation at this point, but overall looks pretty bullish. China can never stop spreading enough FUD. Here we have a Shanghai economist basically saying El Salvador's on the road to death. Yeah, if that were the case, why is your country moving to make Bitcoin mon miners run off renewables? Like, come on. He doesn't actually believe this. It's just like everybody else. They say one thing publicly, but do another privately. Here we have JP Morgan saying there was little economic benefit from El Salvador um, adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. John Hopkins University professor Stephen Hank warned that the move could completely collapse the economy of the small nation. And Bank of China Deputy Governor Wang Yangli took a very hardline approach by stating that the volatility and lack of regulation or controls would put the economy on a road to death. So if you guys were really so concerned about this, you guys probably wouldn't be mining Bitcoin. Let's be honest. It doesn't add up. Moving over to Denmark for next bit of news, we have Denmark's largest bank cautious on crypto but won't interfere. This is really good news for crypto because we have Denmark's largest bank essentially telling its customers, hey, you can trade cryptocurrency, but do it at your own risk. We won't interfere with any transactions as long as we don't really see any money laundering or stuff like that. So overall, bullish news for crypto out of Denmark. Next bit of crypto news comes out of Russia. Russian Ogliark Deripaska blasts Bank of Russia for ignoring Bitcoin. In his own words, he says, Even poor El Salvador, known for being close to off-mentioned Honduras, has realized the need for digital currencies and taken a simple path, recognizing Bitcoin as a means of payment. He also argues that the bank should provide a real financial instrument, enabling independence and foreign trade settlements. He's not the first critic of the Bank of Russia over Bitcoin. He joins other critics, including Russian State Duma member Fedat Tumosov, who recently argued that the bank was short-sighted on crypto, saying cryptocurrencies are the reality. Either we will accept it or we will lose. More and more wealthy people in Russia are starting to realize that if their country does not hop on board with Bitcoin, they will be left behind. In other news, we have the mayor of Miami offering its city's clean nuclear power to Chinese Bitcoin miners. Essentially, she's looking at the Bitcoin miners in China with open arms saying, hey, we know you're getting kicked out of your country if you don't follow the rules and regulations that the CCP wants you to. So why not come over to Miami and utilize our cheap and clean energy, take advantage of our crypto-friendly regulations, if you want to buy real estate with an oceanside view, 
can now start to use crypto to buy said property. Like there's just so many advantages and incentives to be in Miami mining Bitcoin, it looks like. And just like Miami, there are other states that are competing to be the number one mining destination within the US border, including states like Texas and Wyoming. So overall, great news for Miami and the US and crypto by and large. In other news, we have Grayscale Investments exploring 13 more crypto assets for its trusts. Most of them are DeFi focused, those being One Inch, Bancor, Curve, Kava, Kyber Network, Loopring, Polygon, Ren, Universal Market Access, and Zero X, the native tokens of high speed scalable blockchain networks that they were taking a look at are Solana, Near, and Definity. These are some crypto assets that Grayscale Investments has its eyes on. So bullish news for these cryptocurrencies. So if you're into NFT plays like MANA or the NFT space by and large, this last bit of news should excite you. Republic Realm just closed on the largest land acquisition in Decentraland history. We can't wait to announce our big plans for this estate. So they bought up 259 parcels of mana or land and it cost them roughly $913,000. So big money coming into the NFT plays, just like there are regular property developers in the real world. Now we have virtual property developers as well. That about does it for today, everyone. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please smash that like button. It really helps us out and subscribe to the channel. Got some links down below for you to check out. BlockFi and Celsius help you earn some passive income on the crypto you're hodling long term. Get trading today via Binance US. Stay up to date with crypto prices via CoinMarketCap. Stay up to date with events for your favorite altcoins via CoinMarketCal. Follow us on our Facebook page. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day. My name's Token D Rock. Peace.